My skateboard just blew up. Yeah. I think it can still catch fire. It still can. Just like the thought of that happening in my flat, let alone like if I'm asleep, that literally would have burned down my flat instantly. This can happen to anybody as well, and we need to talk about it. Yeah. Hello, Electroheads. This can happen to your e-ride. It happened to my teammate Cole, and well, he had a pretty scary experience. Now, amazingly, he managed to film it all whilst dodging explosions. He posted the events online and got completely slated in the comment section with how he handled it. So we wanted to set those comments straight and also share with you some red flags that are crucial to know so that you don't end up in a similar situation. Cole was lucky. He was at home when his electric skateboard caught fire, but if it had happened at night, he could have been trapped in a house fire or if it happened when he was out, it could have burned down his whole flat. If you have an e-scooter, e-bike or e-board in your home, you should be aware that you are storing a potentially vicious fire hazard in your living space. And if you don't treat it right, it could literally go up in flames. It's a fact of life that when dealing with anything that can store a large amount of energy, there's going to be a risk. So let's get clued up. To make sure we got this right, I consulted with two experts, E-Ride Brain Box, Mark Schaffer from Personal Electric Transport, who's gonna be popping up in the video with some insight, and also battery expert, Jul Scheidsteger. Now a software engineer, he partnered with expert battery builders, Radverkstart for years, and knows a thing or two. Now I ask of you just one thing, I don't care if you subscribe, I don't care if you like this video, but please do share this video with your friends because this could save lives. All right, let's get into it. Now, firstly, we need to hear Cole's side of the story. So Cole, I'm gonna let you do the talking. What happened on the day was frankly just pure luck. I, I happened to be at home and I was just working on my laptop when I heard a hissing noise in my corridor. That's when I saw this huge cloud of white smoke I, I don't live on the, on the ground floor, so I had to run down a flight of stairs to exit the building. I basically just threw it out onto the street and it actually detonated mid-air. If that was seconds later that, that I threw it, I mean, I, I don't even know if I had any, would have any hands right now. The first explosion was multiple cells and it was a substantially larger explosion. I knew that lithium ion batteries can be cooled and submerged in water to be put out. Um, I read somewhere an article by a fire brigade saying that that's what you're meant to do. So my mind just went straight for that. While I was in that sort of mindset, the shock of it, I decided to quickly put a video together and publish it online just for awareness. Because honestly, the thought of that happening to somebody else was horrifying. And of course, that's when the comments started flowing in. I got abuse for my actions, which I didn't really expect given the state of mind I was in. When something like that is happening, you're doing things out of instinct, out of just anything to stop it because it's so ferocious. On platforms like TikTok, people disconnect from that reality. So some of the comments were quite harsh. And I'm talking all of these, every single one of these comments. This is what stimulated the idea of making this video is to basically set it straight and myth bust these false misconceptions. Now, I wanna make it clear that today we are specifically talking about lithium ion batteries. So it's pretty clear in this case, the only real way to stop the fire is by submerging the lithium ion battery into a bath of water. You need to cut off the fire's oxygen supply. So there's not a lot of lithium in a lithium ion battery. Also, the, the, the chemistry is enclosed in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a casing. So a lithium ion battery pack is made up of these little cells, which look something like a double A battery. And they're all kind of like, you know, wrapped sort of like um, configured. So they're tessellated together, if you like. So each of those cells, they're, in, they're, they're all watertight and airtight, which is why if you want to put out a fire, you can use a lot of water, but you stress a lot of water. So either you submerge it completely, like in a bathtub or, or something, or um, you have a massive hose, like, a, like, like on a fire engine, and you use a lot of water to keep, keep the hose on it. That's the only way to put it out. 
Now let me go further. According to the Battery University website, the FAA instructs flight attendants to use water or even fizzy drinks to extinguish a fire in the cabin. Thanks to hordes of thirsty passengers, water-based products are most readily available and deemed appropriate for lithium ion fires as they contain very little lithium. Water also cools the adjacent area and prevents the fire from spreading. Research laboratories and factories also use water. However, if you upscale to a full-size electric car lithium-ion battery, that kind of chemical fire is going to take massive amounts of water to put out and keep out. So instead of dousing a car with water, it's actually smarter to put it in water. The problem with this solution is that it requires a massive container full of water, which isn't that practical to speed to an emergency. And also, you've got to lift said car mid-flames via a crane of sorts. It's clear that there's still some way to go with speedily containing these kinds of fires, but Bedfordshire Fire and Rescue Service note that EV manufacturers instead advise for a controlled burn. Basically, fire services need to back off, close off the area and allow the vehicle to burn out. However, once the fire's been successfully put out, the problem for the fire brigade isn't over. EV fires have been known to reignite hours, days, even weeks after the initial event, and they can do so multiple times. The technical term for this is called thermal runaway. Not only does this pose a safety issue, but it also poses a legal issue. Recovery firms are increasingly concerned about dealing with electric vehicles. In the Netherlands, firefighters have started bringing shipping containers filled with water to submerge entire cars underwater for weeks, if not months at a time, to put out a damaged battery cell in the car. This is because there's no way to diagnose what state a battery cell is in post-damage. However, events like this are incredibly rare. Data obtained by Air Quality News through a Freedom of Information request revealed that in 2019, the London Fire Brigade dealt with just 54 electric vehicle fires, compared to 1,898 petrol and diesel fires. For electrical lithium fires, normal fire extinguishers do not work. There are special types of fire extinguishers, especially for lithium fires, but they're crazy expensive. So in short, if you destabilize battery cells, one catches fire and causes a chain reaction. So what can destabilize a battery? So one of the most common, I suppose, is water ingress, especially living in a rainy old place like the UK. The battery packs often coming from China aren't fully waterproof. They're wrapped in, in, a, in a kind of a shrink wrap, but it's the, where the wires come in is a, is a, a vulnerable point. So water can creep in and moisture can creep into the pack. And it, it, you know, ultimately it can rust the metal connections between the cells and that can cause a short circuit and cause a fire. Obviously, we think all e-rides should be fully waterproof, both battery and casing, but in reality, that just isn't the case. Make sure to follow your e-rides manual and safety instructions and try not to ride in the pouring rain. Obviously, that's not always possible if you're mid-ride and the heavens open. If you do get your e-ride wet, just make sure to put it in a dry place to let that water evaporate. Here's what to look out for if there is corrosion. Corrosion can be seen by opening the protective shrink wrap around the battery. If drops come out of the shrink wrap, that's a bad sign. You'll also be able to see if your cable connections are looking corroded as well. Obviously, not all of us are able to dismantle our e-rides, so best thing to do is take your ride to a reputable retailer or workshop that can take a look for you and diagnose. Now, in scooters, it's not a massive deal because they're usually enclosed in quite durable metal boxes or, or tough plastic boxes, so it's pretty rare that you're gonna get impact damage. You're gonna to have to, when I say impact damage, it's point load. So like a screwdriver or something going into it. It's not simply giving it a bang with a mallet. So that's kind of rare. Here's what to look out for, for impact damage. If there is the slightest, smallest bend or bruise of one cell, it's recommended not to use that pack anymore. It might seem fine now, but down the line, a fire could happen. This is why routine checkups with your e-ride are really important. Make sure you have a reputable retailer local to you that can help you out. On most of the scooters that you, 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 you see, they're low powered commuter scooters and you're never gonna do that. Again, from reputable suppliers, very, very unlikely that you're gonna be pulling too much juice from a battery is what, is what we're talking about. Um, so, so what this is about is that say if you, if you lived on a, a, an infinite hill 
if you if you kind of like hit full throttle and try to get up this infinite hill on a scooter, some BMSs will let you keep on drawing charge to the point where it's, it's destabilizing the chemistry in the battery. More common with electric unicycles, quite frankly, and not all of them. Not so common in scooters, but possible, especially if someone's modded it and, and, and changed the electronics, so potentially you could do that, okay? But again, not likely. All scooters from reputable suppliers are gonna have a fully functioning BMS that won't allow you to deplete or overcharge the battery. It will just, basically it will shut the scooter off at the point that you're getting dangerously low on power and it will shut the charge cycle down once it reaches fully, a fully charged state, which is why your charger goes from green to red to green again. When it goes to green again, it means it's fully charged, okay? So unless, unless you buy from a dodgy source, I mean, obviously if you import like an Amazon special or scale the kind of dark end of Alibaba, you might end up with something that's dangerous. But, you know, buy from us or, 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 or one of the, you know, many kind of good scooter shops around, around the way, um, they would have done all this. They would have checked for this. Pro tip is try not to drain your battery too much if you can help it. Lithium ion batteries are happiest between around 30 to 80% of charge. But you'll recommend at least every 10 charges get that battery level up to 100% to balance the cells. So in terms of the, the fire risk and, and, and how to mitigate the risk, mo if, if, look, if you buy from a reputable source and you haven't messed around with it, the fire risk is minimal, virtually trace. If you're not sure where the scooters come from, especially when it comes to the higher powered stuff, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not safe, but you maybe should take some precautions. Don't block your main exit with the scooter. Don't kind of like, you know, put it next to your box of fireworks. So, you know, try and keep it somewhere where there's not a lot of combustible stuff. Um, and also if you cover the area with a smoke protect, um, that's also gonna be helpful. So if there is a problem, it's gonna warn you. But just practical stuff, just think it through. But like I stress, I mean, if it's, you know, if, it, if it's a lower power commuter scooter or a scooter from, um, from, a, from a store you know, the risk is infinitesimally small. I've never seen it, put it that way. We advise if you have a removal battery, keep it in a fireproof bag or container. Don't charge your e-ride next to a main exit. If something happens and your escape route is blocked, you're gonna be in trouble. Take your e-ride for regular checkups, either once a year or every 1,000 miles clocked to make sure the battery is watertight and there's no signs of issues. If you're going away for a few weeks and you have your e-ride in storage, leave your battery level at around 50%. Where possible, slow charge your device. It puts much less strain on the cells and leads to a longer battery life. I suppose one thing to mention is that fast charging isn't potentially the, the nicest way to charge a battery. So batteries quite like to be trickle charged over quite a long period. That's the best way to charge a battery. If you bolt a fast charger on, it can work, but you're gonna reduce the lifespan of the battery. So it's, that's, that's worth noting. Also on your cheaper scooters, um, you could potentially charge the battery too quickly. And what that might do is, is heat up the charging circuit which again could cause a battery fire so avoid that if at all possible also if you fast charge don't fast charge all the way up drop it at about 80 or 90 percent so the idea of fast charging is you know you've been riding all day and you just need a little bit more charge so just put it on for like you know 20 minutes half an hour or an hour tops until you're back up to 80 percent or something don't try and go all the way up like I said, there is practically no chance of your e-ride exploding or catching fire if it comes from a reputable dealer and you take care of it. But having these simple safety measures in place and looking after your battery's health is a win-win. Overall, lithium-ion batteries are safe. They're incredibly low maintenance and wouldn't have been chosen to run the main bulk of our electronic devices if they were any different. In reality, anything that can store a lot of energy, whether it's a lithium-ion battery or a tank of petrol, has the potential to release said energy very suddenly, aka, an explosion. But a lithium ion battery is much safer than a tank of petrol. Simply don't let the battery get too hot, don't puncture it, and don't buy cheap unregulated goods because you don't know what you're bringing into your home. Well, that's it from us, but I hope you found this video useful. Please do make sure to comment down below and let us know your thoughts, if this has happened to you, if any of this was of any use at all. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon.